Hello, my name is Russell Myers. Welcome to Issues Unite. So, this eviction crisis is obviously not just some issue that is, you know, a one video issue. Uh, you know, this is not a one shot deal. This is an actual crisis. This is the one of the worst things that we have faced in this nation's history. By the way, pardon the uh, the color correction here. Just something about uh, the program or the camera just ain't cooperating today. Anyway, so um, on Friday, Congress, uh, while they were in session, did um, discuss the eviction crisis. But they had no bill, no concept for a bill, no nothing, period. That, that's it. They had nothing. And, they, and then they went off on vacation for seven weeks. Uh, Nancy Pelosi turns around and says, well, the CDC should be the ones uh, extending the moratorium. And it turns out, yes, it was the CDC who had issued an extension to the moratorium in June, but at that time the Supreme Court ruled that any further evictions beyond that one, any further extensions would have to go through Congress. Of course, the President could also do it, uh, but all we've got in our government is a bunch of people trying to blame each other. And, and that does nothing. I've said this before. Blame fixes nothing. I'm surprised they're not trying to blame Trump for this. I'm really, I really am. But no matter what, I want to go back to what I said they should have done from the very beginning. Where I said, in conjunction with the eviction moratorium, this should have been litigated at the bank level to stop evictions. Just order the banks to stop collecting mortgage, a, you know, residential uh, commercial mortgage payments. That would have prevented, uh, yeah, small landlords still would not have had the income, but they would not be on the hook from rent, but they would not be on the hook for the mortgage payments and now many have lost their properties or are going to lose their properties. Other, there are other aspects to this which would have been highly beneficial. I mean, people have taken out a ton of debt in the past year and they would have taken on a lot less of that debt if this had happened. And I'm sure a lot of people are trying to take on debt in the form of loans right now to try and keep from being evicted. But most of those people are not going to be able to do that because they have inadequate income to qualify for a loan. Another aspect of this is, okay, so some people would have benefited because they could afford to pay their rent and didn't. Okay, fine. So they put their money in a savings account or in investments or whatever. So at the end of this, when they have to start paying rent again, well, they've got money saved up. Or over the past year, either now or over the past year, they would have been spending more money 
which would have benefited the economy and preserved more jobs. Make no mistake, layoffs are still happening. I've illustrated this many times, many times, by looking at the unemployment rate. They, that unemployment, you know, 400,000 people a week with the national unemployment claims and millions on continued unemployment, that doesn't just happen. These aren't people that are quitting their jobs. You don't qualify for unemployment if you quit your job. These are people that are being laid off. The people that are being laid off are being laid off because the companies are not making enough profit or whatever. And, and that's a whole other debate. But, um, you know, so even small businesses, medium businesses, whatever, they're getting laid off because there's not enough uh, sales, there's not enough business going on to warrant keeping those employees, keeping those workers employed. So if these people had spent money, had been spending money or are, or would be able to spend money now that they didn't spend on rent or et cetera, then this would have helped to prop up the economy far more effectively. But that's just like the fact that our government subsidized unemployment, which incentivized corporations to lay people off instead of subsidizing wages, which would incentivize them to keep those people employed as was done in other countries. All right, so right now we have tens, hundreds of thousands of eviction notices going out. And what, what effect does this have? Well, when you go to evict somebody, well, now you have to have law enforcement involved. So... You're taking officers off the street during this crisis to evict people from their residences. And where are these people going to go? Of course, the crime rate is going to go up, but define crime. Okay, so these people resist being evicted. Okay, they're resisting an officer. Now they've committed a crime. All right, so when they talk about the crime rate going up, you know, then this is, going, this is going to be part of it. You're going to see a, a massive, massive spike in the crime rate going up this month because of this. And yes, people are desperate. People are absolutely desperate. So now it's going to take more money to keep these keep people incarcerated. You're going to have a backlog in the courts. You're taking police off the streets so that they're not able to focus on actual crimes. You've taken money out of the system that could have, you know, maintained existing jobs. And why? Again, this could be done retroactively right this minute. Okay. You just don't collect the rent from the past year. Right, you don't col collect the commercial mortgage payments for the past year that have not been paid. That doesn't mean you have to refund payments that have been made. 
uh, of course, you know, a lot of people would cry about that, but, you know, that would not be realistic. But if you had suspended the commercial mortgage payments, the banks wouldn't have lost a single penny. They wouldn't have been paying out any money. They just would not have been collecting more money. This is very clear. This is logic. This is how economics and finance work. But instead, this is what we're dealing with. Even if Congress eventually, or the President eventually, does something, it's going to be another moratorium where debts keep piling up. The debts that... Uh, oh! Another benefit to, to my approach to blocking the mortgage collections at the bank level means that there would be no problem with dispersing payments to landlords and, and so forth and so forth. We would the government would not have had to create money out of thin air for, you know, some stimulus rescue, you know, the American Rescue Plan for this purpose. That wouldn't have had to happen at all. You wouldn't have problem dispersing the money because no money had to be dispersed for that purpose. So, this is all a shit show. It's all theater and a, that is putting people's lives on the line. You can expect major, major social disruption and possibly protests, riots, theft, crime, yeah, real crime is going to go up subsequent to this. It's going to because of desperation. But our government doesn't care. The path that they have taken had no intention of helping American citizens. All of this was meant to prop up the banks again this is a the american rescue plan all of this stuff about you know dispersing money and and, all, and the moratorium instead of suspending payments this is meant to benefit the banks it is another bank bailout We haven't even reached the end of this yet because next month, September, the mortgage, the residential mortgage moratorium ends. And I've heard estimates from five to eight million households more are at risk of foreclosure. Now, foreclosure is a longer process, so, so this will be a, a more gradual, spread out process. It takes longer to foreclose on a person, person than to evict a renter. What we've seen so far is only the rent moratorium that has ended. But in September, it is the mortgage moratorium. Um, estimate by the uh, Aspen Group says that the rental eviction moratorium will affect anywhere up to 40 million Americans. The mortgage 
crisis that is pending is estimated to affect five to eight million households. So you've got to figure what at least another 15 million Americans. So if you have 40 to and 15, you're talking 55 million Americans that are at risk of being homeless at this moment in time within a, only a few weeks time and the majority within days. I don't have any advice for this. Uh, you know, we're going to have to have people on the street. It's time to hit the streets. It is time to protest peacefully. It is time to, you know, block the, you know, block the doors of your elected officials. Make it where the media cannot ignore this. Because they haven't even been covering this until it happens. And even now, how are they going to cover it? Anyway, if you know somebody that you can help, friends, family, etc., that are being evicted from their homes, do what you can to help. Do what you can. If you got space, let them stay with you for a while if you can. <clears throat> Aside from that, now, donate to homeless shelters. Donate to food banks. And I don't have anything else to, to say. This is a, one of the darkest moments in American history that we've ever that in in American history, I'm not going to say in in the in American history that we've seen. It's one of the darkest moments in American history. Period. That's all there is to it. This will not be forgotten. This will go down in his in future history books as a failure of our government. We are living in a failed state. Admit it. Accept it. Stop denying it. All right. That's it for this one. Please, share this video. Um, talk about these subjects. Talk about them. Now, if you can, uh, please donate a dollar a month. No, don't do don't donate to me. Donate to a, a homeless shelter. Um, donate to the food banks. And do what you can to help each other. And I'll catch you in the next video.